on this episode of Mind Sweat Garage, we're gonna finish our two barrel, four barrel carb swap. To accomplish that, we gotta get the four barrel on the car, get the car started and outside, and then get our vacuum gauge on so we can tune it. But before we're ready to fire up, we have got a lot of work to do. We need to scrape the existing RTV off the gasket surfaces, get those cleaned up with lacquer thinner, apply a thin coat of RTV around all the coolant passages, coat both sides of our Felpro intake manifold gaskets with the liquid sealer that came with them, drop our intake in place and get all the bolts started, get those bolts torqued down to 35 foot-pounds, reattach the cooling hoses, put our thermostat and thermostat housing back on. So, I'm a moron. <laughs> Very much so. I have once again worked and worked put all the things together. I've been talking to myself the whole time because the camera's not on. Fail to chase the threads on our new intake manifold and snap off a thermostat housing bolt head. Come on, man. Yep. Sure enough. Knucklehead snap that bad boy clean off. Other than that, we've got everything together. All the things for the stuff and to do the things. Yeah. So, got my throttle hooked up. Uh, I've got my linkages hooked up. Got our PCV connected. Got our vacuum advance put in. Got our fuel hooked up. Have our temperature sensor put in. We have a new stud for the air cleaner. And we have a new air cleaner. I do need to get a gasket. I thought it came with one, but it didn't. It's not expensive, it's cheap, but it'll do. So I'm gonna take a little time and see if I can't get this thing out. I really don't wanna to have to weld a nut onto the end because, well, um, I don't have a welder and that would delay this project even more. So I'm gonna try pliers or vice grips or something fun and hopefully we'll be able to get that out without uh, having to call in the neighbors. So after a week with my daughter and her boyfriend here, and then another week being sick, in case you can't hear, I'm finally getting back to finishing up this carb swap. So after I got the thermostat housing off, I tried a couple different methods to get the old bolt out. First off was the tried and true vice grips, but eh, it didn't work. Second thing I tried is using my angle grinder and a cutting wheel to cut a slot in the bolt and see if I could get it out with a screwdriver. That eh, didn't work either. So what I ended up doing was drilling a hole down through the center of the bolt enough to loosen it up and let it collapse. We got it out, went through and ran taps through both sides all the way down to the bottom just to make sure that we didn't have any future problems with bolts. And then we got it all put back together. And now it's time to see if we can get this thing running. Well, here we go. Let's see if this thing will actually start and run and not run like complete and utter ass. So what I'm looking to see is if the bowl is filling. I'm actually getting fuel up here now. And I'm not getting fuel up top yet, so let's give it a boost. I just, just, just want a splash. That's probably a little more than a splash. But hopefully it'll kick off enough. Sounds like it's getting fuel now.
I just realized I don't have the electric choke hooked up. Let me just choke that a bit and now give her a shot. Looks like we need to uh, put the battery in the charger for a bit. Well, kind of at a standstill right now. The battery's dead from trying to start it. And I don't have one of the fancy jump packs. So, it's on the trickle charger. And it probably will be for a day or two before it's ready to go again. So once that's charged, we'll get it back in and get back to trying to get this thing started. It tried to start and it just didn't want to. I think it's got to do with the choke, because I'm not entirely sure I said it right in the beginning. Eh, we'll see. Well, it's the next day, and I'm a moron. Again. I went in last night, did some research, and realized that I don't have the carburetor set up correctly. Specifically, the vacuum lines. I assume that because the bull vent on the two barrel carburetor was open to the air, that the bull vent for this carburetor, which is right here, also needed to be open to the air. That is not a true statement. Also, this tube right here and this one down here, which I have plugged, uh, need to be connected to each other. So we're going to fix that. And then we're gonna try to get this thing started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pull off this plug here. There we go, that's off. Now I have some vacuum line. I'm gonna take that, put it on that one. There we go. On we go. I just need a nice little piece right up here without kinking. Just to pull off right there. that. This ought to be interesting because this one's larger. I don't know why it's, it goes up here, but the pictures I found online say that this one needs to go here. And this one right here. Nope. Plugged. Okay. With that done, we're actually going to get the battery back and start this again. Battery charged overnight and is fully charged according to the little blinky green light on the wall. We got the battery on, it's got fuel. Well, let's give it a shot. I'm gonna try closing this up just a lot. <laughs> And see how that works for us. Oh yeah, I smell lots of gas. I may have pumped it a few times too many. Maybe we give 
give it no choke. And open it all the way up and see what we get. Alright, so my troubleshooting brain says I opened the choke and I got a better result. So maybe my idle fuel mixture is too high. So I'm actually going to back these down, close them half a turn. They're open two turns right now. We're going to close them all the way, back it out, one full turn, a half a turn. So now we're open one and a half. So maybe we won't be getting as much fuel and we get a better result. We'll go choke half open, especially now that I've uh, increased the fuel flow. It is at this point that it begins to dawn on me that I have this exactly backwards. I am not getting enough fuel. After one more test dart, I turn the idle mixture screws out to two and a half turns and gave it some more test runs. Okay, it's working better. A little better anyway. I am now setting the idle mixture screws to three turns out. Let's give it a little more. I can at least get it to come up and idle. I know the timing is set. I set the timing with the two barrel on it. Um, it should be at 10 degrees before top dead center. Close the choke up. Okay, so like I give it, an, it'll idle, but I give it any gas whatsoever. All right, let's let it warm up and see how it does. At this point, I'm sure that I've got a pretty significant vacuum leak, so I'm going to close the choke as much as I can to see if I can't smooth out the idle a bit. Now that the idle has smoothed out and the engine is up to 180 degrees, it's time to spray some carb cleaner around some of the suspect areas to try to locate any vacuum leaks. I have a 
bunch of vacuum leaks. So I hit the where the brake booster is, got a noticeable increase in RPM. made a lot of progress today. Uh, definitely got the problem figured out. Now we just have to fix it. However, as I was upstairs doing some editing, I realized that this video was already longer than I wanted it to be. So with that, stay tuned for part three. And if you want to see more of the dart, check out the playlist right here.